Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it's time to let Peach Blush be the star of the show. A while ago I did a color challenge where the Chemnitz patrons picked three colors turquoise, peach, and purple for me to use to create as many different colorways as I could think of. And in part one of that challenge, I found myself really wanting to make a the peach blush dye that I picked to have a moment because it was the least pigmented color that I was playing with then and so it really deserved a chance to be the star of the show. But in part two, because I was doing techniques that the patrons had voted for, I didn't actually seize the day to do this peach blush base with either purple electric violet and turquoise speckles or just one of them and so I wanted to do a colorway today that lets this peach blush be our star. So today the goal is to create a colorway that is peach blush with some purple speckles on it. That's the vision. I'm going to leave the turquoise alone because that color is tricky and can bleed and it's not part of the color challenge but I just want to make this peach blush the star. <laughs> But before I jump in, if you want early access to the Dye Pop PS series and help influence and shape the direction that that content goes, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. There will be a link down below. Today we are going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I am going to let our yarn pre-soak for a little while. Not my typical at least 20 to 30 minutes. I am just going to let this pre-soak while I go mix up the dye. I don't mind if there are some paler patches and deeper patches and Stroll does absorb water pretty quickly overall. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves and measured out one gram of the Dharma Peach Blush Acid Dye and dissolved it in a non-specified volume of hot tap water. Peach Blush is more of a pre-mixed pastel or lighter color, so it's not as pigmented as some other saturated colors in the Dharma collection. But even with this, I decided I didn't want to go for a 1% depth of shade, which would be one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. I figured let's go a little bit lighter and go for a half percent depth of shade, where we have a half a gram of dye per 100 gram skein of yarn, which then would give us this one gram total. In my dedicated dye pot, I have six cups of warmish tap water. There's no acid in here yet. And I'm gonna add our gram of peach blush dye and rinse out the cup a little bit. We do want to distribute this color really well in the pan before we add the yarn. So you can see that the color in the pan looks really bright, but it is also not that pigmented overall because you can really see through the color. The water here is warm, but we have no acid in here yet. Uh, and now I'm gonna come in with our yarn. There's not a lot of water volume and some color may start binding right away. I think I may have miscalculated how quickly this color strikes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there was no acid in here and it's basically all on the yarn. That was faster than I had expected. Oh goodness. Okay, so I think I am going to have to rethink what I want to do. Um, so we might be going for closer to a 1% depth of shade after all. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out another gram of dye off camera uh, to supplement this a little bit. Oh goodness. All right, this time I have dissolved the gram of dye in almost a liter of water so I can control a little bit where the color goes. Not completely, but just a bit. I'm going to flip this over. I mean, I didn't want the color to be perfectly even, but 
when you have a color that strikes quickly and also there's just not that much dye, uh, things can be a little faster than you expect. So I'm aiming for largish white patches. I don't mind if there is some white left behind, but I didn't want to have the water level too deep because I want to use this dye bath for the speckles. Uh, but I mean, a lot of the yarn is still at the surface. I just don't want the speckles to spread a ton. So now let's add some acid. Oh, and I don't even know why I saw my respirator on. <laughs> I can take that off. Okay, let's go ahead and add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. And just sort of distributing this. You can see that we do have some yellow pigments that are left behind here in the pan. Those haven't struck uh, quite yet, but I'm now debating. Uh, now I think what I want to do is I'm going to leave the yarn in here uh, just to soak for like 10 minutes. Eh. Yeah, I'm going to just leave the yarn in here to soak for about 10 minutes and then we're going to come and remove some water volume before we turn on the heat. I want to remove some liquid from here and so this is a slow way to do it um, but I am literally going to just scoop up about a, a bunch of water and I'm roughly measuring it so I'll tell you in a moment once I'm done with this scooping the water out. I could take this over to the sink and just pour some out, but by scooping it out, I have a little bit more control over the water level that remains behind. All right, I have removed just under half a liter from the pan, and I'm actually gonna hold that in reserve in case I need to bring liquid back in later on. And I am just rearranging the yarn a little bit, spreading it out in here. Okay. Oh, I could twist this. Eh, I only have two skeins. I'm not going to twist it in the pan to speckle. I'll do that <laughs> sometime soon. Actually, I have no idea what kind of order the videos will come out in, but I'm now going to turn on the heat and once things get nice and steamy, I'll put my respirator back on and we'll come back to speckle. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to medium low, just to remove some steam. And then coming in with the electric violet powder, I'm picking up a little pinch and we're gonna do, not necessarily all over, the little areas the speckles throughout and just kind of randomly going around. I don't want to go too heavy or too all over um, because I know we'll have a little bit of spread, but yeah, I don't often get this like light handed approach. Okay. Uh, and I am now going to wait, I think, 15 minutes uh, to give this some time to strike before we flip the yarn and add color to the other side. It has been 15 minutes and I want to check and see. Yes, these look really, really nicely set. I'm not seeing any color spread or move. That's what I want to see. And so now we are going to flip them over. I haven't yet decided how many flips we might do if we're going to need to move this uh, and open it up from the inside. I think it just depends on the way that the overall coverage feels to me. Uh, but yeah, I am really 
really happy with how this is going. And restraint with speckles like this is not something I often do. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go put my mask back on. I mentioned this before, but you definitely want your fingers to be as dry as possible when doing this. And so I am taking a little bit of effort here to sort of go in a little bit of these diagonal lines uh, just because, just for a little bit, because then we know we have a reasonable distribution of our speckling. But if you pick up too much powder, then it definitely will be easier to dump it heavier than maybe you want. And I probably am going a little heavier on this side than I did on the last one. But the goal, we don't even need like some of the color on every single strand or anything like that, but the goal is just to have it reasonably distributed around at the very edge on the yarn. So, once again, we're gonna wait 15 minutes. Once again, I want to come and check and test. What I'm looking for when I do here is if I see like color spread or a halo move. Um, one place worth checking a little bit is these edges where I added the dye. Just giving that a moment. But yeah, that's pretty good. So now I'm either gonna be satisfied with the color or I think I might just wanna add a little bit more. Again, the coverage doesn't have to be perfect, but when I open up the skein, you can see some areas uh, without color. And so that is sort of what we are looking for. But you can also see we do have some amount of color penetration, so it's not like awful or anything like that. But we'll just add a little more. And remember, with hand-dyed yarn, we embrace the imperfections. The imperfections are part of what makes this yarn beautiful. So, it's just important to keep that in mind. Even as I do this and say that, I do try, as I'm adding color, to add to different strands, but again, it is okay if oh, that's little, if we don't get super even color coverage. There we go. I'm sort of examining it a little bit lengthwise just to see if I see like large areas where there's not a lot. And now I'm just carefully coming in with that leftover color on my fingertips, which by the way, I have been saving water, rinsing this in water and saving it. Uh, so, you know the drill, we're gonna wait 15 minutes. I am really enjoying this colorway. But now I'm gonna come with this color that we had removed initially, and that back in, and I'm actually gonna grab another liter of water. Uh, so that way we can just apply heat and make sure we don't have unbound dye anywhere. That's a reason why I like adding more liquid towards the end. Uh, but, oh, and I, uh, but now I am going to bring this back up to temp, let it heat for about 30 minutes, and then we'll turn off the heat and let it cool. I may remove it to cool, but uh, it'll heat in here for 30 minutes before we either let it cool off in the pan or let it cool separately. But since the color has bound, I don't think it needs to cool off in the pan. Some colors like purple pop or fluorescent fuchsia need that time to absorb the rest of the pigment more than something like what we have here. Let's wash our peach and purple speckled yarn. 
I really like this peachy pink color. So we did end up at a 1% depth of shade and you can see that it isn't that pastel. I am really surprised with how quickly this struck. Uh, it struck so fast. And I know in part that's because there's not a lot of pigment in it, but like, I did not expect with no acid, no acid for it to just really soak up onto the arm that quickly. But this is one reason, <laughs> I love the little patch of sunlight there, but this is one reason why it is worth, I'm gonna add some dish soap. This is one reason why it is definitely worth playing with multiple colors and getting a feel for how they work. Uh, for example, we now know this peach strikes so incredibly quickly. And from experience, I also know that this electric violet speckles and can strike really quickly as well. Probably not as fast, but we were able to not get a ton of spread from those um, large speckled areas that we did on this yarn. But there's some other colors that I know don't strike super fast, like, <laughs> well, Purple Pop's an obvious example. And so if I were to try to do something like this and get speckled with that, we would see more spread of that. Paper. So it's just a reason why it's worth playing and playing with different colors. And anyway, I think that we're not seeing any bleeding or anything. So I'm gonna now put this yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and look at the finished yarn. Well, I would say that this colorway finally makes Dharma Peach Blush Acid Dye the star of the show. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous peachy color. And I think that this color layered with some uh, more yellow and orange would give a glorious like nectarine type feel with it a bit more saturated I think. I think that the violet speckles are a lot of fun and they don't take away from the peachiness that is the yarn. A lot of times I tend to go for black or navy speckles and so it's fun to layer something else that's bright on top of not a bright color, but it's, it's fun to play with more color versus what I consider more safe choices. Like navy goes with just about everything. Black goes with just about everything, which is why I lean that way. But I'm hoping to, not that I feel like this is a color risk, but I'm hoping to challenge myself a little more going forward. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really need to push and play for more warm tones, especially things that head to that orange and yellow kind of spectrum. That's not where I often immediately go and the color I immediately go for, but whenever I do play with them, I really like the results. I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of all of your comments and suggestions and color combinations. Uh, that I do draw from in the future. And I know that there's many I haven't gotten to yet, but I love it when you suggest different combinations to try. So go ahead and leave more in the comments below. Uh, I really do draw from these a lot as I am planning out my next colorways. If you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with yarn dyed in Dye Pot Weekly and other Chemnitz tutorials videos, and it's a really fun way to get some pretty yarn and support the content here at the same time. While you're at it, please make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss a new video. I always publish videos at least twice a week, and sometimes we have special series and unboxings and live streams, and we just have so much fun with yarn here. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.